So if artificial wombs aren't robots, then what about the robots people keep mentioning the ones that can actually carry babies? Those robots do exist, but not in the way social media suggests. In hospitals and care facilities, assistive robots are being used to safely lift, carry, and transport infants, especially in neonatal and maternity units. These robots are designed with pressure sensors, soft grip technology, and motion detection so they can hold fragile bodies without causing harm. They aren't parents, they aren't decision makers, and they aren't autonomous caregivers. They're tools. Hospitals use them for one major reason. There aren't enough human caregivers anymore. Nurses are overworked, injuries from lifting patients are common, burnout is high, and staffing shortages are becoming the norm. Care robots help reduce physical strain, prevent accidents, and allow medical staff to focus on tasks that require human judgment and empathy. In countries with rapidly aging populations, like China, Japan, and parts of Europe, these robots are also used in elder care, helping move patients, deliver supplies, and monitor basic needs. This is where the confusion starts. When people hear robots carrying babies, they imagine replacement. But in reality, these robots exist because humans are stretched too thin. They don't raise children. They don't replace mothers. They don't replace nurses. They fill gaps in a system that's under pressure. And that brings us to the bigger question. If governments are funding artificial wombs and care robots at the same time, what problem are they really trying to solve? That answer isn't about technology. It's about population math, and that's what we'll break down next.